we're live. Oh, and there's a Scott Hanselman in the room making what? a special guest appearance. No uh, one can see him, but he's here. Oh, oh my goodness. This Hustle is an stuff. endorsement, isn't it? That was literally the perfect time. That's all he wanted to do. Now he can say he was part of the first mobile.net community stand-up. Thanks, Scott. There we go. That's how we do it. That's awesome. Well, we're really excited because this has been a pretty big initiative that I've been kind of wanting to do for a while. But, uh, you know, if you've come and watched any of the ASP.NET community stand-ups, we're trying to expand that. I'll talk about it a little bit more. I figured I got some beautiful, wonderful people on this uh, community stand-up. Do uh, you guys want to introduce yourselves? Maddie? Sure thing. My name is Maddie Legere. I'm a PM on the Xamarin Forms uh, XAML experience team. So all the stuff you see when you're uh, doing your UIs in Visual Studio. That's me. Dave? Maddie. I didn't know that's how you pronounced your last name. That's fantastic. Okay, one more time. Most for people us. don't. Wow. Legere? <laughs> yeah. Say it again. Legere. Legere. It's like Le Chair, except smoother. That's fantastic. So it's French or? French Canadian. So French Canadian. Oh, Florida. okay. Had to throw the Canadian in there, huh? Um, okay, so I'm David Ortnow, Senior Program Manager with Mobile Dev Tools, uh, specifically over Xamarin Forms and Xamarin Mobile SDKs. Uh, yeah, so I'm really excited to be doing this. It's going to be a blast. We've got so much stuff to share already. Uh, I don't know that an hour is going to be enough, James. I don't think so. I think we may have uh, perhaps bitten off a little bit more than we can chew, but that's what we do. That's what the Xamarin team and Mobile.net team do. We kind of do our own thing. Uh, I'm James Montemagno. I'm here in beautiful Seattle. Well, Redmond, Washington, per se. Also still beautiful. But uh, where are you guys at, too? Where are we at? I'm in Boston. Boston. Good old Boston, Mass. Yeah, and I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. I've got a little representations back here on the wall I so that tell. Uh, we tell. all remember. Yeah, couldn't couldn't tell exactly. Yesterday, that entire backdrop behind uh, behind you was completely different, by the way. Yes, it was. No, it, it was. was. We've, it was we've done a little work in the house. <laughs> It's beautiful. Yeah, so I'm, I'm James. I'm here on campus, so I get to hold down the Channel 9 fort. Uh, so I've been a long time in the Xamarin community. Hopefully a few people know who I am, but uh, I'm a program manager. I oversee all of our mobile development tools, so I work with all of our amazing PMs and engineers and the amazing community that helps uh, Xamarin grow and just .NET itself grow. Uh, and it's really exciting to kind of see the, the chats light up. We have all these things going on, and I do my live stream, but it's not quite, you know, as in as as involved as this, you know. <laughs> so, uh, cool. So, well, I think that what I want to do is first make sure like people kind of understand what this is and kind of what we want to get out of it. So, you know, Scott came in for literally five seconds and he was like, "Hey, I'm Scott." We didn't actually say any words. He just gave a big hug, and that's what I appreciate. Right. Uh, that's what I think is good. But what we have for a long time. So let me go over into my monitors. Uh, we have this new set up fancy monitor. I really like this, this stream that I, I had Golnet set up. But the, the .NET community stand-ups are sort of, think of them as an ongoing show that is every single week, multiple times a week. So ASP.NET has been going for like, I don't know, 100 some episodes, guys? A uh, ton. Yeah, a lot. And I think that they started on YouTube, moved to Twitch, and did this multi-stream and all over the place. And it was quite a blast. So we wanted to take that, but expand it to all the different workloads. Damien, a few weeks ago was talking about how we were looking into do this. This has been a pretty good initiative for a while. And here comes Golnaz coming in. Someone said your mic Guest appearance. Oh, mic's not on? No, it, like, it could get louder. Oh, it so could get louder. Gotcha, a little bit. Golnaz in every episode of .NET Community Stand Up. The Hello. true hero. The true so, hero. Keeps us on the straight and narrow. There you go. Thanks, Glenn, for the, uh, for the <laughs> update there. I appreciate it. So. Uh, cool, we got Frank Krueger in the chat, Clifford in there, whoa, Juarez in there, uh, Ruiz, Ancient Coder in there, all these people, amazing people. So what we wanted to do is take that and expand it to all the different workloads. So what you're seeing here is the YouTube page, and you'll see the latest upcoming week right here when you go to the .NET Foundation YouTube channel. Subscribe to that, you'll get all the notice notifications. So here we can see the, the mobile .NET community standup is right here. Then also what's cool, is on the Twitch channel, which we love Twitch, very interactive, getting all the stuff here. We see the chats coming in here. Um, and when you go to Visual Studio, you can see that we're live, but you can also see the events tab. And when you tap on that, you'll see all of the upcoming events, and we're scheduling them about a, a month out. So when you tap on one, it will bring you right here into the series. So you can always bookmark this. You can get a notification. There's usually a reminder button on upcoming ones. If you set it on the series, you'll get notified for everything. So there you go. That's it. 
So yeah, that's what we're going to do. What do you guys think? Love it. Yeah. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think everyone's so busy distracted by the chats and everything like that. Yeah, that's the thing. We need to learn how to split our focus. I mean, obviously, <laughs> we do meetings quite frequently. <laughs> but, you know, it's... I've got both the YouTube and the Twitch. I'm I'm still learning how how uh, delayed the stream is, right? So mm. it's like, okay, right. <laughs> you're sharing your screen, you're talking about your screen, but what I'm looking at right here, I can only see your faces. Yep. And so, yeah. So if anybody is wondering why I'm all, that's what's that's what's going on. I'm trying to figure out what's up. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty. It, it's really hard. I think I, I usually have a lot of, one time I was doing an Essentials live stream uh, on my Twitch and Matthew joined the chat. So Matthew Leibowitz, he was joining in and he goes, man, I just can't, I can't deal with this delay. It's like 30 seconds and there's multiple settings. But I think we had tried a few of them and like the low, low latency just wasn't at the quality that people expect. Yeah. I think, yep. so Eugene asks in the chat uh, before we go through some of the stuff uh, and I'll go through some of the format too. He's asked, why do we use Visual Studio? Uh, that's a great question. Well, so C Sharp Fritz, Jeff Fritz had set up um, the Visual Studio account. We we're doing Visual Studio. And well, you know, we're in part of DevDiv. So uh, maybe people don't understand our, our structure a little bit. Do you want to kind of talk about us a little bit? Go for it. Maybe let me just talk. I'm over here. David, David talk. <laughs> sure. So uh, DevDiv stands for Developer Division. Um, so this is everything Visual Studio. So you know, when I introduced myself, you know, I didn't say PM of Xamarin right off the top of the bat. I said mobile developer tools within Visual Studio. So that's that's Windows, that's Mac. Um, it's really uh, and and there's tools that are that sit outside of that as well. But um, so that's how we fit within the Visual Studio family and how we as at Microsoft think about the products that Xamarin brings to the table, um, as well as other mobile products. You know, uh, it's not all Xamarin. There's Cordova, there's React Native. Um, those things are not completely absent from our vision. So, um, but our hearts, our souls, uh, <laughs> what we spend most of our time day in and day out working on is absolutely Xamarin. So that's a little bit of how we sit in the structure. And then, of course, outside of DevDiv uh, and the tools that we make, then you've got uh, you know the Windows team, the Office team, Azure, App Center, uh, things like that. Actually, I don't think App Center falls under DevDiv, does it? That's, that's separate? They're over, over like is. where DevOps are at, Azure DevOps. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then also, you know, under DevDiv is also .NET, right? Hence the .NET community standup. Yeah. So you have all the languages, you have all the tooling, you have the cloud SDK integrations. So that's why we say mobile developer tools because we're we're literally talking about all the tooling, the SDKs, the integrations, all these different things. Yeah. So like when Mandy says she's working on like the you know XAML experience, it's it's. It's kind of all of knowledge of Xamarin forms, but how does that mesh across? I assume everything, right, Maddie? Oh yeah, huh. lots of XAML, lots of XAML <laughs> over here in DevDiv. <laughs> so, well, you know, it's uh, even though even though we have these distinctions and everything, we are certainly one one nice happy Microsoft. So uh, we collaborate a lot with these other teams across different mm -hmm. orgs. And uh, I actually uh, just a funny anecdote. This morning I got a text from uh, a friend who said, "Hey, uh, I, I have some power user suggestions for uh, Outlook on iOS." Are you part of that team? <laughs> and it's like, man, I, you know, I wish I was involved in that. That's a, it's an awesome product, but that's not me. So, got it. Yeah. So, so this is what we're going to kind of do on these. I think it's going to be a fun adventure. So, different teams are going to join each week on these Thursdays. So, ASP.NET will be Tuesdays. We're going to have different shows on uh, Thursdays. So, we're going to try to be the first. Although we kind of got lucky because it's January. There's five. Thursdays, so we kind of got lucky in that regard. Uh, but um, you know, we are going to attempt to be the the mobile.net workload the first uh, first Thursday of every month, and then we have uh, runtime tooling and cloud uh, runtime and languages. So C sharp, all different people will be on that. So Kendra will be on here, Andrew uh, Hall, Rich Lander, Emo. All, um, uh, uh, Kathleen Dollar, like a bunch of people, Mads, hopefully from time to time. So a lot of people, and hopefully these will be the friendly faces that you see for the mobile.net. Maybe friendly, super well, friendly, super friendly. So friendly. Look, at, look at the smiles. All right, cool. So here's the show. Here's the flow of the the show, and we're going to be you know monitoring the chat. So as you can see, our eyes are, are going all over the place. But we want to kind of be an open dialogue. It's a community stand up. It's not just like a Xamarin thing or a mobile or Microsoft thing. It's a community thing. So we have really three sections. 
So the first section, we kind of follow exactly what the ASP.NET is. So all the shows that you see in the .NET community standups are going to be very similar. So you're going to have um, community um, kind of blog posts and uh, cool projects and things that they're working on uh, from the world of, of .NET, uh, specifically around mobile. So sometimes it may be .NET, but like related to mobile or just specifically on Xamarin or something else. And then we're going to cover uh, all pull requests, right, David? What are you going to cover? Yeah, yeah, I'll cover some pull requests uh, from across the different uh, repos that we, you know, that are open source. And uh, some of them will be contrib contributions from internal, but we'll we'll have a lot of community contributions. And uh, it's almost hard to pick the ones that we have time to talk about, but we're going to do our best. Yeah, and I think you know, good feedback there is like how much is the balance, right? So definitely reach out to yeah. us on Twitter. All of our Twitter handles are in the the notes, I think, on the Twitch stream and on on YouTube as well. They are. Um, and then we're going to maybe do some demos from time to time. You guys are going to do demos, right? We got Ooh. some Tito. We yeah, what, do. what are you going to do, Maddie, later? Well, we have a brand new property panel to show you all inside of Visual Studio 2019 preview. Um, so you can use it today, but we'll show you some of the cool stuff that it does. Uh, well, Dave will show us some Xamarin Forms shell, which is very exciting. Yeah. Um, but we have about a zillion links and community input things that we want to get to. So we'll see. We'll see how much time we have for everything. <laughs> yeah, I see how much I see how much. Well, let's go into it. I'm going to pop over into onto uh, my desktop here, and I have a that link. People may be like, "What is this weird aka.ms link thing?" Like, should I, should I type this into your browser? Right? Uh, you probably should. Well, that's what it's going to bring you. I noticed that the ASP.NET team uses this thing called OneTab. Have you guys ever heard of OneTab? Just today. It may change Me your life. <laughs> so what it does is you have all these tabs in Chrome open, and you hit the one tab button, it just puts them all in one tab. And then it gives you this, and then you can restore them, and you can have different sections. And then also, you can then share it on the internet. Um, however, when I grabbed the one that you sent me uh, late yesterday, I couldn't restore all the tabs at once. I could only click them. That's correct. I could you... restore my own tabs. Yes. Mm. Yes. So that was a bit of a drag. That is correct. Yeah, I you suppose I should file a ticket. You have to control and then pop, 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 open all of them. That's what I had to do. Yeah, kind of a pain. Okay. But this is what people will see. So that way you can get all the links and all the things that we're going to. So the first thing I wanted to to dive through is uh, is this really cool article from. Um, the, the interesting part is all of our amazing individuals have great names, uh, just like my last name, Montemagno, that many people for 32 years couldn't pronounce. So I apologize, everyone. We need. Uh, yeah. Need... <laughs> so, Disclaimer up front. <laughs> so EVZ, so Evgeny, uh, did this really cool article. We did. When did we do bottom tabs? Uh, let's see. That was uh, one of the first F100s that shipped. It, if it wasn't 3.0, it was like 3.1, I think. Yeah, the bottom tabs are probably one of my. Oh, so look at that. And I believe Mike's Candy is the uh, contributor for that guy. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, and it actually says in his blog post, it says Xamarin Forms 3.1. So <laughs> there we there go. go. This is one of my favorite, is one of my big ar articles I did by myself for a while ago. And uh, he wrote this article on how to dynamically change the colors of the tab. Because we have bottom tabs, and we have also, you can set different colors, right? Correct. Yep. So I think the problem here is that you may not want all of the same colors. Mm -hmm. You know, a little customization. So he wrote this really cool article on how to. Add an effect and a custom renderer to do this. So an effect just on Android, uh, no really custom code there, and then also a little uh, custom renderer on, on on iOS to do it. So it's really cool because you can just grab this code. You can see it's really really simplistic. There's like get selected tab, set the selected tab tab color, a little routing effect, and then to be honest, there's like nothing in here on Android. It's in the shared code. You could call that Android specific. Uh, maybe, maybe people don't know what any, like specifics are. Do you, uh, do you want to give a quick overview of what those are, real quick? Sure, sir. Sure. Uh, so when you when you have a Xamarin Forms architecture, uh, the Forms layer is an abstraction on top of those those platforms, and uh, you can get to a lot of things that have been surfaced and made available in the API in Xamarin Forms. But but when there's something that you know that native platform supports and it's just not readily available to you, you can create a class called a platform specific, and then uh, you can go into your your platform code, the Android, the iOS, UWP, et cetera, and you can implement that. 
and then back in the forms layer you can you can use it so mm -hmm. doing things like safe area insets for ios when they release that it's very ios specific and uh, that's a platform specific you can put on any page similarly i think that's what he's what he's doing here and uh, I, I don't have the code in front of me so is he consuming it in an effect or are they working separately? One platform uses a specific, and the other platform uses an effect. Yeah, so what he's doing here is pretty cool. And on Android, he does have an Android implementation of the effect that says set tint whenever the property changes. And then he just calls the, the, the specific, so the Android specific. Now on iOS, though, what he does here is he, he very minimal code. It's literally set tint color. And what he does is he gets the container subview, looks for the tab bar, sets the, the tint color on it, which yeah. is um, just a property tint color. So just kind of dynamically setting the tint color. So very simplistic, cool. not, not too crazy. But it's cool because it looks really cool and it's just, you can find it on GitHub. And it ends up being this really nice little boop, 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 so you can change the colors whenever things are selected. Pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, cool, let's see what else we have. So another thing, I, to me it's kind of community because Matthew's been in the community for a long time and MFractor is this awesome Visual Studio for Mac extension. Uh, and it does all sorts of things. There's a free version, there's a paid version. But if you have the paid version or boot up the trial, he wrote this, uh, and the team, Matthew Robbins, they wrote this amazing image asset manager for Xamarin apps. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, oh, I can't. So nice. <laughs> It's like really cool. Now it's only on Mac though, but he has this really cool walkthrough of managing image assets. So what's cool here is you can just easily look at all the image assets. You can add an image asset down through it, and then it will create all the different um, all the different uh, resolutions for you. It will show you all the different resolutions. It will make sure everything is inside of it. It can even like show you the original um, size of it, everything, and, and dynamically put everything in the folders for you. It's super duper cool. Um, and then you can even optimize, I think, like the different PNGs and stuff, which is pretty cool. Yeah, crazy. it'll do a crush for you. Uh, I don't remember which library it's using for that. But one thing I noticed when I was looking at this uh, was it seems to provide counts of how many times an asset is used or how maybe it's how many variations of an asset there are. So if anybody in the chat has used this feature and, and you can explain to me what those counts refer to, that'd be pretty awesome. I think it's a little early for Matthew uh, yet down in Australia, but maybe, yeah. he, maybe he got Ooh. up super, super early. It's a possibility. Uh, I'm gonna fix my link over here into the, I, I, I did a typo here. So the end of it is supposed to be the date. So let's see if I did this right, 19. And then let's go ahead and hit, okay, now hopefully I don't stop the stream because that'd be bad news for everybody. <laughs> All right, so Are that should be good. Are you putting this on uh, YouTube or where'd you put it? I just put it on YouTube. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that over onto the, onto the Twitch as well. I do apologize for that. You know, me, Classic James just being, and I typed it wrong again. Oh geez, uh, here, there we go. It's the date, I swear. <laughs> there we go. Oh gosh, there we go, 19. Perfect, there we go. All right, now we're set. Uh, all right, so perfect. This next one uh, over here, which I thought was really cool. So I've been a longtime proponent of plugins, uh, and Pujil Lewis, I, I'm going to try to try attempt Lewis. Oh, it's just Lewis. That's his last name. So Lewis Pujols, uh, he uh, works at CrossGeeks, which they've been writing all sorts of great content. That uh, a lot of amazing uh, MVPs and people over there. So uh, Lewis, he wrote this really great article on just how to create a plugin. Have you guys ever gone through the exercise of creating plugins? <laughs> I have not. No, Maddie? Uh, no, I haven't either. <laughs> so, well, that's perfect because this article will walk you through exactly how to do it. Uh, and, and it tells you exactly what it is. So plugins were like this great concept that I, I, I like to attempt to take credit for. But abstracting common, common uh, or, or platform-specific code into a common API, and that's what Xamarin Essentials turned into, all these different plugins uh, in general. So what's cool is that he actually walks you step-by-step step on how to get started with my cross-platform templates. You can watch my YouTube video if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, what the project structure will look like, where you would put the code, how you determine what's shared code versus platform code. And what's really cool is it's not just about walking through and creating the plugin. It's about also downloading like Orin, so Orin Novotny's NuGet Package Manager, which is a phenomenal tool. 
uh, and how to publish it. You can publish it directly through there, or you can publish it in CI, and, and you can set it all up. But he walks through all the specific code, the CS project, everything you really need uh, to get set up and, and push it out uh, to NuGet, which I thought was super cool as you're, you're going through here and the naming. And he also really walks through like why he did it. A lot of people are like, well, why would you create a, a plugin, right? Why would I need to do that? And he walks through like he's creating multiple apps, and he was creating just code that he wanted to share, even just internally in NuGet too. I think people don't don't think about that. So, yeah, yeah I know a lot of uh, enterprises will do just that. Um, heard from somebody recently asking for source link uh, on Twitter. Mm. Um, and I said, well, why? And he said that uh, they have a variety of libraries in their enterprise that they reuse over and over again. And it would really help debugging to be able to go directly to that code. It makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah. So hopefully we can uh, do something about that. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you about SourceLink. So I've uh, had a lot of conversations with the, the debug teams, the mono teams, and the IDE teams on this. So we uh, integrated SourceLink. So if people don't know what SourceLink is, it's phenomenal. It's sort of a debugger slash IDE tool. So if you're using a NuGet and you hit a breakpoint and you F5, I think you just said it there, you, you actually go into the code. It'll pull down the code from GitHub based on the commit, and then you're debugging yeah. through the code. Yeah. Amazing. Right. right. So nice. So now, nice. the problem is it doesn't really work with Xamarin. It does work with UWP and desktop apps and ASP.NET. But it doesn't work with Xamarin apps just because our debugger is different, right? So there's mm -hmm. some work that needs to be done. And it's not an internal tracker, but prioritization, right, is always a, a thing. But that doesn't mean that you don't have to integrate it into your library. We do it already, like, and just put it in CI. So we do it with Xamarin Essentials. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's a NuGet and then a few CS Proj settings. Sweet. All right. Uh, a few things that I wanted to talk about. This one was from, uh, I think it's from Marco. Uh, not necessarily, I want to say like 100% for like just Xamarin, but just how to handle exceptions. We love exceptions. Exceptions are great. Love to hate exceptions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he was reading on the GNOME uh, project from Frederico, a blog about how to handle errors in Rust. And it sort of had him thinking about, hey, I'm making all these apps with Xamarin. How do I handle a lot of my exceptions? So he kind of walks through like, hey, your normal code may look like this, um, which is try, do something, display alert. I think all three of us are probably guilty. <laughs> sure, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right? It's like this is, you know, something went wrong, right? It's like I, done. I, I read yeah. how to do that in MSDN Magazine. I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what it said. So MSDN Magazine. That's what the doc, I you think know. that's exactly what I put as my alert message, too. Like, oh, something went wrong. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Just try again. <laughs> His alert is very nice. Thanks for your patience. So that's really, really uh, nice. Uh, or how about nice a developer has been notified, a right? Developer. And then just, oh, you don't tell anybody. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, so so you probably shouldn't do that. Um, or you can kind of think about how to restructure it. So he started thinking here about how you could try to do something like try, execute, and put a bunch of logic into a common pattern. So he's using uh, refit here. But uh, some of the code ideas here is what this would do is, is you could have some common code that's doing these RESTful service calls. So for instance, uh, it may check to see if there's internet. It may give you a win starting, so maybe you do a little spinner. Uh, it will go off, execute the task, come back, return if it's OK. And you're, you're getting more concrete OK exceptions, and you can handle it instead of just throwing exceptions all the time. Right. So I thought that was kind of cool. In general, again, not very Xamarin specific, more like kind of just .NET-y uh, a bit, which I thought was cool. Right, yeah. and, and Marcos mentions the Tailwind Traders app. Mm. Um, and that was one of the goals we had with that app was to provide some of those patterns and practices. Because what we've learned mm. is that when people see samples come from us like that, they expect to have a certain level of uh, show me how I should write really good enterprise level quality code that's going to you know, be able to live for years and not bite me, not, not get me out of the bed at 2 in the morning to fix a bug. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I thought about that. And what I, what I found on top of this was another blog um, by John. Uh, and uh, or Dan, Jan, Daniel John, sorry, Daniel John, uh, who kind of like on top of the structuring, he created this library called HTTP Tracer, which I thought was really slick. And uh, for instance, you know, the, the issue that I normally have with doing HTTP requests is I have to hit a breakpoint 
And if it's successful, then I'll get the JSON back. But if it's an exception, then I have to put a breakpoint in the exception and, and do yep. this route. But I never know what's happening under the hood. Uh, so what he wrote was this little library that you can just ingest into any .NET application that just dumps it in the debug output. So you can see here it's actually going through and, and putting out all the debug information, so all the threads that are started, and then you see the HTTP responses and the JSON, okay. and it's only in debug mode. So all you have to do to your HTTP client is add a new HTTP tracer handler, and then you can pass it any logger implementation. Nice. Pretty so pretty. so if if I was doing this before, I probably would have been using Postman or Charles Proxy or mm -hmm. some of those types of tools. Well, I guess not not necessarily Postman. That's more for executing the uh, the gets and the posts and whatnot. But Proxy and what's that? Uh, Is it what's the other one from uh, Progress now. I think they got Fiddler. They Fiddler. Yeah. Fiddler. Yeah. yeah. All these little tools. So it's kind of nice just to have it in your in your app. So yeah, yeah, nice to have it right there in your output. So uh, moving on to some kind of beautiful design, if you will, <laughs> if I like, I thought this was a really uh, interesting blog post that came out right before the New Year's, and there's been this like sort of ongoing weird pulse music theme. I kind of like I, I say it's weird, but it's kind of really cool to follow the progression. So I'll kind of walk through. Are you guys both aware of this project? Oh, yeah. I saw this a couple weeks ago, and I was like, I want to build that. <laughs> now, which, awesome. which one is this? I was totally paying attention so to the chat. This is the pul pulse, pulse music. music. Oh, the pulse music. Music yeah, player yeah. design with Skia. So they, there was like this design challenge. Like uh, Anish from the Microsoft UX uh, posted like this dribble post. And Javier was like, I'm going to implement that. So in August, he implemented this beautiful sort of design um, with Skia uh, Sharp across iOS and Android and Xamarin Forms. And in the README, uh, it was like, this is not a real player, it's just UI. So uh, MFKL, which is the only thing that I can see their name from, because there's nowhere else I try to, like, I spent like an hour searching for their name. Uh, I couldn't find it. But uh, they are a contributor to the VLC, so the Video LAN um, uh, library for, for .NET, which I didn't even know existed. I knew it existed, but I didn't know it like officially existed, which is like playback of video and audio for like all .NET. So what he did is he took that app and then just added the VLC lib to it and added all the controls and open source it as an official sample. So you can see like updating in real time. So as he comes in, he shows a video down here of it playing. You can see the timers updating and play, pause, forward all the times in real time, which I thought was kind of cool. If you're looking for like a music player sample, that's pretty good. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it looks awesome. And I love like the credit back to Anish and Javier and going on here. And you can just you can find that and you can you can actually click deep into the Video Land uh, GitLab. Uh, project mm -hmm. and yeah. and see all the samples and go in a little bit more about it, which I thought was really cool. Well, and uh, and I want to say this is our Javier. Javier works with us now. I'm so excited. We got him. We got him. He's so talented. He's working on the VS Mac team at this time, but uh, he's been a, a long time contributor to Xamarin Forms. It puts out some amazing blog content. Beautiful samples like this one here. So mm -hmm. so excited. Very cool. I didn't know that even happened. So some people, yeah, yeah. Some people were emailing me like, "Oh, like, like I interviewed, or like I'm getting hired." I'm just like, "Oh, that's cool. Like I had no idea. Like we assume that you know." I'm like, "That's a pretty big company. I don't know. It I is. know <laughs> nothing." So, James is also surprisingly isolated out in Redmond because Xamarin is everywhere. Yeah, the mobile dev team is everywhere. <laughs> so it's very true. James has to hold down the fort on the West Coast for us. <laughs> I do. I like you know. I like the uh, the 285 days of. Uh, Gray, grayness in the sky. So, uh, let me continue. I got so much to cover here. Oh my goodness! All right, so uh, I got to give a shout out to Ryan Davis, a longtime MVP. Uh, we worked with him specifically around uh, Xamarin Essentials, and there were quite a few people that were like, "Oh, why don't we have interfaces?" We went back and forth on interfaces, and uh, from a simplicity and um, like our structure and performance and, and just how we wanted to do it, we, we didn't do any. So he created this website, uh, which I believe is like an all just a 
uh, WebAssembly site, I'm pretty sure. But you can go on here, and what it does, it lists all of the official releases of Xamarin Essentials NuGets, and it will give you a C sharp file, uh, which is your um, which is your interfaces. So here I can open this with like VS Code, for instance, here. And for every release, because APIs may change, we might be adding new, new, new ones in there. And what's cool is that it gives you all of the interfaces stubbed out that you can just pop right into your code in, right away. Uh, but it also has this about up top, and that goes into the GitHub of this project. So if you want to just introduce and add the code so you dynamically do it in your, in your app, you can do it here. But he also published uh, the NuGet on NuGet. So it's the Xamarin Essentials interfaces. And yep. what that does is he keeps them in sync with Xamarin Essentials, so it'll be updated there. So if you want to do IOC or any of those crazy things, all the, all the things that the kids love these days. The kids. The kids. The, kids. the Xamarin Essentials kids. You're all, you're all kids compared to me. <laughs> yeah, these kids doing all their IOC and dependency injection and all that fancy stuff. So. Uh, cool. All right, so th this one I thought was really good. This actually has like very little to do with, with mobile or .NET. I just thought it was cool. Uh, Marco again, uh, pull back Marco, and this is not from 419. He's not magically in the future. They're just you know, doing the dates right over there. Uh, Marco did this really cool thing where he wanted to build his own uh, compiler because Frank create a, created a C compiler because Frank, as we know, <laughs> Frank Kruger just creates compilers for fun on the weekend. For breakfast. So, so he wanted to create like the simple kind of learn more about the compiler and, and, and learn more about system reflection emit. So it was very simple of just creating a, a hello world type of application that that adds or subtracts a number, just you know going through that. So he walks through this this language he calls go to uh, that uh, about parsing, semantic analysis, you know about the syntax tree, all the things that are way over my head, which is why I have Frank as my co-host on my podcast. Uh, he's way smarter than me. And it comes down to a very simple, simple process of being able to like, hey, if I have this you know, method, the idea is that I will increase a number and set it equal to each other and do this go to. But what I thought was cool here is that he also created a full IDE in the browser based on Xamarin Forms and Frank's library Wii and ASP.NET. I'm pretty sure it's the ASP.NET version here. So he calls it GoTo Studio. So when you tap on that, it loads. Uh, this page, which is built in Xamarin Forms with WebAssembly. Look, look, David's like so confused right now. And I'll prove it to you. I'll go to the source I'm right upset here. I didn't know about this before. So here's here's <laughs> we we .js, and um, and and here is his go to statement in the mono JS and Xamarin Forms core right there. And there you go. And the Xamarin Forms platform because. Frank made you know made made that there. So what you can do is you can come in and and this is the the sample that he that he has in there. So you can enter a number, hit the button, and then it, it the idea is that this will copy this number into y and then subtract it. So it's subtracting it, sets x to y, and then I don't know, some magical go to thing. But I thought it was so cool that it's like oh it's here and you can share this and you can go to help. Very cool. Mind boggling. So. Yeah, yeah. Mind boggling. Mind boggling. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just so upset right now. Why are you so upset? What's wrong? It's all open people source. Need, people need to tell me about this stuff. <laughs> well, that's why we have the .NET community stand up. That's there true. That's why we exist, right? We can't be everywhere at once. In, in my most recent survey, I, uh, no, not the most recent, but there was a uh, Xamarin Forms 4.0 pre-release survey. If you mm -hmm. use the templates or if you go to the blog, you'll see there's a link. So everybody needs to be filling that out because I read them. And one of the questions on there is, how do you keep track of the news? You know, mm. what's going on? And, uh, you know, not everybody's on Twitter. We get that. Um, sometimes it's forums. It's a lot of blog posts. It's a lot of your shows, James, uh, to get comments. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, anyway, this, this is a new channel right here to uh, keep people up to date, including myself. <laughs> That's very true. That, it's a yeah. way to do it. I don't know. Do you have any pro tips, Maddie? I am just sitting here fascinated at how much stuff is going on and how much you guys know about all the stuff that's going on and just watching the chat pop by and Chris is in here uh, he's really enjoying the Frank Kruger community stand up he says so yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically we have a lot of Xamarin team folks and mobile dev tools and devdiv in the chat right now so uh, sure. enjoy it 
enjoy it while everyone's here. Don't start asking support questions. <laughs> no, they'll, they'll all scatter. That, that's also the advantage is that like you know our community not only just you know in, inside of, of the of the the .NET team here and like the Xamarin team so we're, we're dying. We love this stuff. I mean, this is our, our bread oh, yeah. and butter, right? It's so. You would be surprised how many um, people in like the UX research team at Microsoft and how many like program managers on other teams are jealous of how many people we have responding to surveys and like interview requests because we come with these beautiful notes from like all these just devs that are nomads and like all these cool careers and they have this one one other guy that they work with in some shop and we get this awesome feedback and all the other PMs are like my community won't give me this info. <laughs> like, where do you find these people? I was I was so amazed. We're very lucky. <laughs> I was talking to a bunch of uh, of our awesome developers in the community uh, around like productivity with uh, the IDE and stuff like that, and Xamarin Essentials too, and and like the places that some of our devs live are just like incredible. Like there's yeah. I forget the one guy's name. I'm, I'm so it's so terrible. I forget his name. He's on our stream. He lives off some like tiny island off of Madagascar. I was like, I want to go there. Like I want to go to Madagascar first. <laughs> I want to come to your tiny island and like Con jam on some conference code. for two. <laughs> yeah, conference yeah. for two, please. So, all right, I got a few more. Ready for this? Let's see here. So this thing is amazing. Great on time. We have Twenty five more minutes. Perfect. So we have a carousel. View update coming, correct? Uh, yes, Carousel. Love yes, this. view layout. What 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 is coming? Yeah, it's, a it's called Carousel View. Yeah. So we have one. We don't have. One. Uh, we don't have one yet. It's going to be in 4.0. You can see a preview of it. Uh, yeah. We have a Carousel page. We have Carousel page now. Yes. Got it. Yes. And th that one's like old, and you guys didn't update it. Uh, so we actually had a Carousel view that was released as an early preview mm. uh, years ago. And uh, there were concerns about it. You know, there's a whole history to this thing. Yeah. Um, and and so we finally have come back around to an implementation that we really feel like meets the expectations of users. Yeah. And that's what we're working on releasing now. Aside from that, there is the carousel page, which is uh, built upon the page paradigm. Um, and you can use it. Um, it's not necessarily the most performant thing you'll ever get. But there's also plenty of other carousel views out there, which I have a feeling you're about to tell me something about one. That's right. If you don't want to wait for the official one, this thing is mind blowing. It's by Jean Marie. He, uh, this thing is is phenomenal. So he had created this library called Horizontal List View. So I think this is before maybe our scroll view and other things. Yeah, you're familiar it was with this. Yeah. yeah, but it's bananas. Like so, he added this carousel layout with auto item sizing and column counts and everything to his horizontal list view. So you can have a linear, a grid, or a carousel. And this thing is banana. So you have carousels, you can do horizontal. But what I want to point out here is that now you can do different lists, finite lists, grids inside of here. But it's all open source on GitHub. I did, I literally just found this blog and it like blew my mind. Right as you go through here, though. This thing is crazy. So okay, you're like, all right, there's this list view. Here's this thing. No big deal. But as you scroll further, he starts to get into reordering in the grid and the animate. It's like just built in. Like what? That's that's un. Right. It's like, so and it handles notify collection change automatically. This thing is bananas. Um, <laughs> it's so cool. It's just like psh, amazing. So if you're looking for something, give this a look because it's super cool and it uses collection view and, and recycler view under the hood. So give that a look, sees. There you go. Yep. Um, and shout out to how great the uh, demo app is. Silly due to the day. Yeah. You get to rate, rate them. <laughs> Five stars. <laughs> Five stars. <laughs> for your favorite comedian. Moss is my favorite, probably. Big, big fan. Yeah. Uh, all right, so another thing I wanted to point out here is Lewis, uh, who I met when I was at the Caribbean DevConf, phenomenal individual. He created a few different things. He's calling this the Xamarin Universal Library. There's a lot of these like awesome libraries, but what it is is a beautiful GitHub page that will show you how to get access to all these great articles, books, eBooks, podcasts, tools, videos. If you're looking for a good place to start, it's really cool. And there's uh, uh, on top of that, there's they're working on a website right now. They're doing like a blog of the month uh, every day in February. They have a Facebook group, uh, a WhatsApp group, uh, a LinkedIn group. Uh, he just has groups everywhere. So a nice, beautiful community group. So you can lead through that. And he has like this contributor badge, um, which is super cool. And it's not affiliated with us, but it's a cool logo. So nice. All right, let me bust through some of these. We got some cool tweets, some books. Good friend Daniel, MVP. Uh, came out, uh, a beautiful forward by Jason. 
uh, it was one of our co-creators of Xamarin Forms, uh, released a new book. Uh, it's on a packet pub uh, for creating Xamarin Forms projects. And I think that led to a bunch of other people. I want this to be a trend, like what books, what articles are you reading? Mm -hmm. Part mm -hmm. of the 100 Days of Code, Nick here also tweeted out some of his favorite books, and it looks like you had a little shout out here, David, as well. I, I did, uh, but but my name's only on it because I wrote a little forward. It's actually oh, okay. Ed Snyder's book, so. Oh, right there. Make this sure that's clear. I didn't write the book. Forward by a tiny. I just told a story. Ed Snyder up top, another lovely. But no, Ed, Ed did a great book, and uh, there was another one on there as well, right? Yeah, there or was. was. The... Gerald's on here as well, who did the Xamarin Forms Essentials. Not to be confused. Right with Xamarin Essentials. <laughs> so, there you go, right. Yeah. Uh, Naming. Yeah, a few other cool ones, just kind of cool tweets that we found. Uh, uh, I want to say Michael, or it could be Mikel. Not going not gonna to go. Mike's Candy. Mike's Candy. Uh, on Twitter, he found this cool app that he wanted, and he wanted to sort of create this view in, in Xamarin. So he started to tweet out his progression of it, building these beautiful things. He's over in Ireland. Uh, he started creating these beautiful like kind of progress views. And then later on, he tweeted again what it looked like when he was all done, this beautiful video uh, for 16. It's, it's a kind of a stunning sort of animation uh, that he has on here uh, of loading and stopping and starting. It's pretty yeah, cool. The, so. the performance you can get with those animations in Skia within Xamarin is just it's fantastic. Yeah, I love it. Uh, a few other things in here that I like. So sometimes we got to take the bad with the good. I really like the series by Damien. Uh, he's sitting down with developers and asking them, hey, what are kind of the things that you want to see improve, the things that bother you every single day? And this is great feedback for the team. So the team has been re reading these articles. So, yeah. You know, I don't know about and Maddie, maybe that you feel this way too. When I read survey feedback, when I read online feedback, this, you know, it's always nice to hear positive things. No yeah. doubt about it. Yep. Makes, you feel, <laughs> makes you feel like you can get out of bed in the morning. But the stuff that's actually the most useful are blogs like this and, and when people share their frustrations with us. Yeah. Um, hopefully in a constructive way. Sometimes, yeah. you know, it gets a little, because it's very personal, you know, it's like you it just is. screwed up my day. Um, yeah. But that's the stuff that is so actionable and very, very useful for us. So every time I speak to people, and I'm doing it right now, I tell people, just, you know, unbridle your thoughts. Yeah. Tell me what's going on. Uh, and you'd be surprised, don't... yeah, how many quotes, sorry to cut you off. Like... No, you're good how many quotes we use from these blogs and from when we talk to people and from surveys and like big bold text, bright red, like look at this quote, look at yes. what we are learning from all these people and like how, how many people will rally behind like one or two thoughts right. that we hear over and over. Yeah, and, and you know, it, and it opens up really, really good in that constructive way. It's like we all love Xamarin, we want to make it better, and like we're just sitting down and just kind of talking. You got sometimes you got to take the good and the bad, and there's always positives and negatives, and I think it's good for the team to see, and it's always not, it's not like a bash, right? The, the worst of any language, any technology is a bash without like talking with the team <laughs> too. Like, hey, like we're here t to like hang out and like chat and like, you know, let us know what's going on. So I think it's kind of good. It's kind of a nice little article series too. It is. Yeah, I dig it. Yeah, and right. it reminds me of something that I heard Amanda Silver talking about when she was talking about Visual Studio 2019 and the things that the, that the team has been working on. She framed everything. They're challenges. We know what our challenges are. You know, th these are the things that we're working to improve. And being able to acknowledge what our challenges are is, I don't know, there's probably a seven steps of grief here or something. But, you know, it's it's one of those necessary steps to, to get us to where we, we all want to be. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, that's how we make the product better, too, is by talking and, and listening to the amazing community that are actually out there building apps every single day, right? So Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Last thing here, and then David's going to take over, is I thought this was so cool. David found this uh, from Andre, uh, who decided to build a website uh, to browse the Xamarin Forms source code. We have yep. great documentation yep. and API docs, uh, but he used Carol's, uh, who I said, a, do I say Carol? Oh, uh, Carol, um, Carol's um, source browser. And what's cool is that you can click on this and go over into, into here, and you can actually look at all of the, the source code easily, all you know organized, which I thought was really Really cool. So instead of having to go into GitHub, instead of having to pull down the code and just browse the source, right? It's just boom. That would be a nice GitHub feature, just like you know. Yeah. Come on, yeah, come on, knack it on that. I saw on Twitter. Yeah, people were asking for that to be a, a GitHub feature. I think somebody tweeted right at right at Mr. Nat Friedman. Nat Friedman, Ooh. get on that. Ooh. Come a on. Powerful tweet. <laughs> I'm going to text him later. 
All right, cool. Uh, you want to go through some of the, the PRs, both community and stuff that we're doing? We'll let you share your screen over there. Yeah. Sharing screen one. Do, 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 do. There we go. All right. Somebody give me a thumbs up when we're good. You're, you're gravy. You're gravy. No okay. one can see anything. Now all they see is GitHub. What are we looking at? Uh, so here's what we're looking at. Uh, I'm going to go through these different PRs across uh, GitHub, our, our properties there, and highlight a few of the things. And I'm going to blow through these uh, because we're running short on time and I have a meeting. But uh, the first thing we've got here, I have a list of the F100s. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, F100s is the Xamarin Forms 100 little paper cuts, those things that bother you, frustrate you on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and we started creating some specs. Some of the specs are, are quite small. Some of the specs are more full-featured. Um, but these are things that if you're looking for an opportunity to contribute, come in here and look at the F100s, look at these help wanteds or up for grabs, which we probably need to do some housekeeping because they kind of mean the same thing. Um, but you, you filter on this and uh, you can see all the stuff that is just sitting out there. And some of these things might be very easy for you to do. Maybe you can just pull this out of an existing project. And at least it's a starting point and you can work with the, with, with the uh, internal forms team, the core team, to get these things done. So I uh, highly recommend you check this out. And this has really been the, the, the source of where a lot of the forms forward progress has been. You know, James, you asked me about the bottom tabs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had yeah. to really do some calculation there because we've had, uh, we're on 3.4 now. So 3.3.1, 3, 3.2. 3, we've had so many releases. We've been releasing approximately every six weeks since build last year. Um, and so we've had a fantastic cadence. It's hard to keep track of where all these things have been landing. So, yeah. So highly recommend you look at that. Okay. So let's get into a couple of these individually. Uh, so here's some pull requests. Uh, this is from Gerald Versluis. I don't know if I said your name, last name properly, but I, I met Gerald uh, maybe at the MVP summit, but I certainly hung out with him when I was at Techarama in the Netherlands. And uh, he has been a busy boy. Uh, so apparently he has a project where he needs to use a picker. He's got a, a color for the picker title. So, uh, you know, if you've ever done any picker work and you're like, man, how do I uh, colorize a lot of these pieces and parts of that UI? This is the PR for you. So it makes it easier to do that. I have actually code that I had used in the past, and probably most of us do, that uses an effect to apply these sorts of things. Um, so that's really cool. And then he spent some time blogging about it. Mm -hmm. So we include that link uh, in the one tab as well. So you want to get the down and dirty. I mean, anytime you you PR something and it gets, you know, it's getting merged, you absolutely need to be blogging that stuff. Well, that's the stuff I love yeah. to see is like I did that. Yeah. I'm about to talk about, I'm sure you're going to talk about my checkbox. I'm going to blog an entire series on how I did that thing. But this stuff, right, is so cool. I, I think also like the experience of sending a, your first PR and going through the reviews is like a cool experience too. Absolutely. And we want to hear what that experience is. And I've done some um, interviews with people in the past about what your experience has been contributing because we want to make it as smooth as possible. But, uh, you know, we have our own struggles of uh, balancing, uh, you know, how much time do we spend reviewing and working through PRs and how much time do we spend fixing bugs and uh, improving the product and things like that. So, but uh, Gerald is not done. Gerald also has another Ooh. picker PR here. Like I said, he has a project where he's using some pickers. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, so this one is to disable suggestions for all pickers. So, you know, when you get that keyboard popping up, you get the, mm. the spell checking and the, and the suggestions. So this is a, a way to disable that quite easily. And then, uh, again, he's on fire. It's, it's, it's the Gerald show. It's the Gerald show uh, today. This is one that I really, really like. And I, and I know there's another plugin out there for HTML label. Um, this one does mm -hmm. uh, pretty much the same thing. Labels now in iOS and Android in particular, and perhaps UWP as well, natively support rendering a lot of HTML. So you almost don't even need to do any kind of translation or uh, you know fancy formatting of translating HTML into formatted text or anything like that. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm excited to see this one get in there. Uh, it's just going to be so convenient to be able to you know bind an HTML string into a label and easily get your formatting that way. Personally, you know I've I've got 20 years plus of uh, development experience. A lot of it was web, um, and sometimes you know uh, an HTML string is just an easy way to do it. I know I've used APIs in the past where the source uh, text strings that I get are formatted in HTML as you would expect. So this just makes displaying that stuff so much easier. And then, yeah. and then, Ooh. somebody. Uh -oh. 
Oh. Somebody went off and Who's made a that? check. Who's that? That's me. This guy, James Monta. What? Monta Magna. I've heard, I've heard of that individual before. Known pro, and loved. Pro user. What do you do? You love. You live, love, love bike, biking and code. code. I might get that tattooed right. on my arm, actually, in, Are in you? Uh, Morris nice. code. Yeah. In Morse code? Yeah. Uh, so this is actually, uh, not going to lie, it's a it's a request we have uh, received many times. Hey, I want a checkbox. Hey, I want a checkbox. Of course, then you know what follows after that. Hey, I want a radio button. And the reason this wasn't in the box uh, at launch and since then is because uh, iOS doesn't actually have a checkbox, right? Mm -hmm. Android has it now. Um, I don't remember when they, they added it, but it got added. And then uh, UWP has a checkbox, and of course other platforms have checkboxes as well. So it's time, it's high time that we have a checkbox, and uh, I think this will be a nice, easy, useful thing for people. Of course, you could have always just used images and toggled that. You could have used switches. Um, there are several other ways to, uh, to get this done, but having a control that's named what you expect it to be uh, out of the box is just there, the right thing there are checkboxes in the checkbox pull request too. See, like see the like the GitHub checkbox, and look at those checkboxes. Oh, look at those beautiful yes. checkboxes. Yeah, so I'll be interested to, to hear you know and see your blog posts about how you uh, did this, especially on iOS where it's not a native deal. Frank yeah. Frank did it. That's what happened. Frank did it. Yep. Nice. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, the Frank. The Frank Kruger Show. Yeah. My first, my very first uh, Xamarin Evolve. I was walking down the hall and somebody says, "Hey, what's your topic?" Because I was speaking on. Uh, iOS animation, core mm. animation. And the very first thing somebody says to me, oh, do you know Frank Krueger? You need to talk to Frank Krueger. He knows all about that stuff. And I'm like, dude, I'm the one speaking on it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Who's this Frank Krueger guy? And it turns out Frank Krueger is awesome. Yeah, and there's most a lot of... of my, uh, uh, most of my trips to Seattle end at Frank Krueger's place. That makes sense. That's every night for me, just hanging out with Frank. Uh, a couple more here. Uh, changing a span default binding to one way. Now, this is one that uh, I'm hoping to drive some conversation to. Um, Andre uh, in Romania, which I actually did a, a remote presentation to his meetup recently, and that was a lot of fun. I, I really appreciate him setting this up. He's a common, uh, uh, frequent contributor to Xamarin Forms. Um, but this is one where it's like, okay, everywhere else the binding default mode is is uh, different than it is here on spans. Mm -hmm. And this was done for performance reasons. It was a discussion that was had and it was a decision that was made. But Andre is saying, hey, this keeps biting people, people, and we have seen people uh, run into this. So it could be that it's just a learning thing. Um, but come, come to this uh, issue, comment on it, let us know what you think. Should we make this one time? Should it be one way? Or actually, I'm sorry, it's one time now. Should it be one way, et cetera? Um, Want to see some conversation there. A uh, couple more, and these are Essentials PRs. Um, so we've got one here that adds the uh, a Shake API. And initially, he proposed it on device, but I see that down here discussion was had, and I believe it's being moved to Accelerometer. Is that right? Yeah, so this one, we have a pretty big discussion on, so Shaking device and how we should do it. So we're going to be like talking a little bit more in depth about it. Um, in general, just because what we want to do is make sure that like, it makes sense for people. So we're kind of revving on this as so some feedback. If you've implemented Detect Shake API into your app, let me know. So yeah, right now we're thinking about putting Accelerometer. So we would actually just use the Accelerometer itself and not use the... See, Android and Windows don't have specific APIs, but iOS does. So, but you have to like hijack your your view or whatever. So I think it's it's a discussion we want to have, and that's one that we're it's on our map to bring in. But it's definitely going to go. Matthew's been definitely been paying it, but we moved it into the accelerometer because it kind of makes sense there. We think, but we want some feedback. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, cool. So jump on there, everybody. Uh, let us know what you think. We got another essentials one here. Um, something that Prashant asked for, and actually I moved back yeah. to his issue because he described it. Mm -hmm. And here's the PR. Um, so this is from Niklas. And uh, it's a it's browser customization APIs to add color to the title, background, controls, things like that. Um, so James, what do you know about this one? Yeah, so this one's cool. We went back and forth with Matthew as well. So Matthew's one of our main devs on the on Essentials with John Dick and, and me. And 
What we decided is we're, we added all these crazy extensions, but what we decided to do is bring in, uh, unfortunately, a dependency for iOS because the system drawing color mm -hmm. lives in OpenTK. So we had to bring that in. So instead of creating our own color, like Xamarin Forms has its own color, we don't want to do that. So we are in the final stages of updating this code to move away from his custom implementation of a, of a color because we don't need another RBGA in, yeah. in our life. No more colors. We don't need an essentials color. Uh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and we're really close. So we have some final rev on this uh, that we see there with John. And we should be able to pull this in literally into probably 110. So I'm pretty oh, excited. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, I saw that Essentials color and I kind of cringed, but uh, I knew co calmer, cooler heads would prevail. Um, a couple of other PRs that uh, are kind of sitting and they've been around for a bit, um, mostly because they're more substantial and they required some discussion, but uh, we have a lot of positive consensus that these things will be happening. Um, not in 4.0, but hopefully in the release shortly after that. One is Media Element here from Peter Foot. And uh, it provides just that base. If you're, if you're a UWP uh, developer, this is going to be quite familiar, I think, to you. Um, provides that uh, base element for playback of audio and video. Oh, cool. Um, now, you know, you mentioned that uh, .NET API earlier with the uh, the Pulse music thing. Um, I'm going to have to go back and have some discussions and, and see where that overlaps because um, that was very cool and very interesting. And then one more here, uh, and then I'll wrap up. Uh, a camera view control. And this is from Pavel, uh, who has been working with us and contributing quite a few of the F100s, which has been amazing. Um, but, you know, I, I can't count the number of apps that I have done where I have a custom camera view. And I just want that base camera piece to be taken care of for me. I don't want to learn what the new Android camera API is, which, my goodness, have you looked at how much code that thing is? It is a pile. And not not a pile, but you know it's a long, long amount of code. I made that sound really bad. Maybe I meant maybe I meant to. Maybe it's a that's lot of a Freudian thing right there. It's a, lot it's of a code. pain point. Yeah. It is. So I would love to have this, and I have pulled down the uh, a build of this PR. I have used it um, not extensively, but I got it working, and uh, I'm excited to see this happen. I think the main thing with this one in particular was uh, we wanted to make it command friendly. Um, currently, it's mostly uh, events, if I recall. And so uh, make it more MVVM friendly that way, and it'll be really, really nice. So um, that's what I've got. I tell you what, you know, we've already filled an hour, and we've got so much more yet to go. Uh, we're, we're not going to have any problem filling these time slots. But <laughs> we were worried. No. At this point, I am actually going to have to say goodbye. Uh -oh. uh, I have another presentation to give here in two minutes. Um, so I will share demos later. Um, or but, next uh, month. Always next yeah, yeah. month, David. There's always next month. Always next month, and it'll be even better next month too. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll share. I'll tweet out some uh, some videos. But uh, Maddie, I think it's your turn. I think it's demo time. Awesome. Well, David, thanks for uh, joining. That's awesome. Have a good call. <laughs> Enjoy. Right. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, May the force be with you. <laughs> yeah. See ya. All right. I'm gonna take over. Here we go. Cool, so we're going to go just the two of us now, James. Just the two of us. Whoop, well, there we go. Let's see how my computer hangs out because I, it's been running Teams and everything I've been doing has been on my other computer. So this this poor guy's probably a little sleepy, but um, we'll see what happens. So this is the Visual Studio uh, 2019 preview build, which you can all download today. Just search on the interwebs, Visual Studio preview, because the link is like more than one word. Um, but yeah, you can tell right here, you can install it side by side with Visual Studio 2017. Um, so it won't screw anything up, which is great. And then you can test out all of our new features as we ship them. Um, and we are just getting ready to ship out the second preview. So even more to come to show next month. Um, but the big thing that I wanna show you all today is this lovely property panel right here. So uh, the, the mobile dev team has been working on a cross-platform property panel. So something that you can see in in all your different IDEs for Android, for iOS, for Forms, on Mac, on Windows. Um, and we just got it hooked up for Forms on Windows, which is a huge deal. So I kind of want to play around with it with all of you today. Um, so I made this really ugly uh, login screen that doesn't do anything. I love it. Thanks. 
Looks um, like all it's my demos. Literally the blank form zap template with a couple entries and a button stuck on it. Um, but I wanted to show you some of the cool things that we have. So my favorite, of course, is the color picker. So you just kind of go on down here. I love purple, so let's make this stack layout a nice dark purple. It's gonna take a second. All right, give it a sec. There we go. Sweet. Um, that's my favorite. But uh, some other really cool ones. You know, you could add some padding. So if I wanted to add you know, side padding. I can do these two right here. I can do my top padding on this little box. Um, and feel free to drop your questions as I go through this. I will catch up to all of them towards the end um, and give you all a chance to ask. Uh, yeah, so, you know, see some little padding pop up. That's so nice. Uh, I can go into, like, my button, um, move around my vertical options. So, like, I don't know why this button is so far down, so maybe I want to, like, start and expand it maybe don't love that, I'll move it to a center and expand. Um, and it just replaces it right here in your XAML. This is real, not fake, it's great. Um, and then the other really cool thing is we've just started getting the collection editor to work. So say I wanna implement zooming for this view for whatever reason, I can actually go down here to this gesture recognizer, hit my little dots, uh, I'll add a pinch gesture recognizer, add that, hit okay puts it right here, and with the lovely power of IntelliSense, I can just do pinch updated, and it will create my event handler for me, put that in my C-sharp backend right there, that quickly, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, and there's a bunch of stuff we still wanna implement on this, so like, if I pop back up into my stack panel, like I have searching, so I can do like font, well, there's no font in the stack panel, but I can do like effect and that'll pop up. Mm. Um, we don't have categorization yet though. So that's something we really want to get feedback on. Like what kind of categories you want to see, what your favorite controls One are. One category. And, and, it's empty. Yeah. String dot empty. It's empty. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good category. Um, right. and, and you can see I have, you know, I have my previewer up, my toolbox up, got the whole happy family inside of Visual Studio. So now, uh, now, Maddie, do you yeah. need to use that with the 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 previewer? If people are not using the previewer, do you does it still work without that being open? Oh, it still works. Don't worry. And you can see even more of your code. So you can see, like, I'll go back in and I'll change my vertical options again. Put it back on start and expand. Got it. And it changes it immediately, which is great. Um, there are definitely like some people are are picky about how it's formatted. So all of that feedback you have, we would love to hear it. You can actually just go into Visual Studio Help send feedback. It's super easy. It doesn't even make you leave the IDE. And then you can just go to suggest a feature and it pops up this website. Mm. Um, already set for you to go, which is great. And if you have any bugs you find, it'll attach all your logs for you. It's so nice. It makes it very easy to debug. But this is the preview page. So um, if you're interested in trying this out, it's just a download. It's it's side by side. It won't screw anything up. So, um, so um... Stelzy yeah. seventy nine in the chat asks, "Isn't this like some of the default experience, like with the you know WPF designer? It looks familiar. Maybe you can talk about sort of the the history of of Xamarin Forms and like you're showing a lot on the screen. You show the preview or the property, like all the different areas yeah. on your screen. Maybe you can because we didn't always have everything that you're seeing here. It's true. Yeah." So, I mean, Xamarin Forms, right, is just, it's a new XAML. It's a different type of XAML with, you know, different words than what you see in UWP and WPF. Um, and the whole point of it is to be cross-platform. But because it's a different XAML than, you know, what came with UWP and WPF, none of the tools that we saw from, the, like, the designers and the, the property panel and the toolbox worked with it. So... In kind of the uh, Xamarin cross-platform vein, the things like the property panel was developed separately um, to to work on Mac, which it's, you know, that implementation is still a work in progress, so hang tight for that. But, um, you know, the previewer is kind of its own thing, the toolbox is its own thing, and all of these things come together to hopefully make a really good productivity story. So with the previewer, that was kind of our, our first big bet a couple of years ago. Um, you know, designers are really hard to build and they're really hard to build well. So we thought, why don't we just give you something that'll at least show it to you quickly and live. Um, and we know that there have been a bunch of people giving a lot of really good feedback on the previewer. Um, dependency injection stuff we know is an issue. Uh, people wanna see different form factors. And I love hearing that because that is our main focus really um, improvements for Visual Studio 2019 is making this a really awesome tool. 
Um, the toolbox, people were like, hey, I, uh, the Xamarin Forms controls are like so close to the UWP controls, but not quite, and I can never remember. So we made you this little toolbox so you can remember, and you can actually just drag this in and, and put things in here with a little snippet, which is great. Um, and, you know, of course, this is mad at me because my XAML was just really fake. So now we're back. <laughs> um, and and uh, the document outline, I see something, the the XAML from the visual tree. So that's a huge thing we hear a lot too is the, is the document outline. So some people might be familiar with that pops up here and it has your stack layout with or in UWP, your stack panel with all your stuff inside of it. And you can kind of drag and drop it around. That's something else we really want to get your feedback on and see how important that is to all of you. Because the more we hear you complain about it, the more compelling it is for us to do something about it. I think, I think we have, a, and I think in Visual Studio for Mac, I believe there is a document outline. There just, is. Just like magically of somehow of how Visual Studio for Mac worked, like it just pulled it in where like we need to do some custom work here. But I think what we're kind of working on the important parts and, and you know, I think here the, the property panel, right, it, it needed to be re thought about for how we're doing all of those values and specific for Xamarin forms and different inheritance. You just couldn't reuse a lot of the code and a lot of the teams work on that. And I know in the previewer, I assume you know the, the latest bits, but I know that we're work, we've are we been working on a lot of things there. I, I'm fairly confident we can talk about a little bit about what we're doing there. Yes, there's stuff that's coming out in preview too, so that's, that's fair game. Um, we are, uh, I know a huge issue with the previewer, and anyone who's done customer interviews with me over the past couple months has heard me talk about this, is that you have to build your project before it works, before it does, uh, you know, live reload, uh, not reloading, but live, um, like, updates of your display. So we finally built the previewer so that it doesn't have to build your code anymore to work. So it won't show your custom controls, but it will show, you know, just a really quick, easy layout of your project, um, of your view. And hopefully that will improve a lot of the reliability issues that people have been experiencing with it. So that's coming out in preview too, so we're really excited. Um, something else that uh, Pierce Boggan tweeted today, IntelliCode now works completely out of the box with Xamarin Forms. So that's not a previewer thing, that's an editor thing. But Instead of IntelliSense being alphabetized, it's going to learn from you what you use the most. And uh, it'll you know, put, put those kind of at your top of your IntelliSense suggestions. And it'll be way easier. I think Clifford had tweeted back and said that. Um, I know he hopped off earlier, but he didn't even realize it was there. And it's been so helpful for him. So yeah. that's a really cool thing coming, coming that should be pushing soon, too. Yeah, I think on the on the, the the preview part, like you and I, we've done so many chats with developers <laughs> over the months to really understand that. I know Jim, is, Jeff, Jeff Jones has been bothering me on Twitter forever. He's in the chat about what are our direction, where are we going, and mm -hmm. you know, if the thing with the designer, the designers are extremely hard, extremely brittle, and the the the, the problem is usually with running custom code, right? And that's the problem that we see all the time with with um, the previewer is like out of the box, right. they're actually showing you the Android surface or an iOS surface you're connected to a, a Mac. And for the property panel, we got a question about like, how does it work with custom controls and inherited types? And those just work. Yeah, yep, So awesome. Yeah, there's some, the magic there of being able to investigate some of the code there. But the problem is those are just sort of reflecting on the types. It's not necessarily having to render things in real time and having an interactable surface. So I, I think you and I have always talked about interactive surface versus not interactive surface and the things we want to do there. So yep. like when you look at this screen, the things that we've done is like, Matt, you were showing off like the IntelliSense. We completely redid the IntelliSense 100% mm -hmm. from the ground up. That works going over to VS for Mac in, in the near future. I don't have a date on that, but like we're bringing all that IntelliSense goodness, right? That's a big thing, <laughs> huge yep, thing. That's huge. <laughs> uh, in general. And anyone who uses Mac, I'm sure. I've heard a lot of people have both because they use Windows for IntelliSense and Mac for the previewer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> yeah. And then all those things, right, which is like all that dependency injection, all the custom code. Like what happens on this page if you invoke you know, a compass controller accelerometer, like what happens, you know, in general. So there's all of that type of stuff. Uh, it's it's kind of interesting to think about um, that causes all these issues. So what we're doing, kind of what you mentioned is like this new, I guess we call it like a light mode or a low fidelity mode. I don't think we've come up with a name for it, but I, I think of it as like a fast preview. Does that seem yeah. right? I've been saying fast preview, full preview. 
kind of what I've been going with. Yeah, and the idea there is, let's say you add a bunch of custom controls or a bunch of like, the idea is it doesn't run your code, and then yep. that if you add a custom control that it can't render for some reason, like a map or something, it just shows a box, right? Like you don't need it. It's just it should be super duper quick. And then, of course, you know we have to bring this all across platforms. So that's a whole other thing to think about. So, yeah, yep, it's a good time though. Lots of cool things. There's we all have heard all of the feedback that comes in about Xamarin Forms and all the tooling that goes with it. And feel free to tweet at me, tweet at James, tweet at David, um, and with any ideas you have, and definitely submit them in here because we do look at every single suggestion that goes in through send feedback. Uh, actually, I looked the other day. The mobile.net group has one of the highest percentages of like responded to feedbacks, whether it's put on our backlog or um, you know something we have to say like, oh, this you know this can't work for X reason. But mm. you know we do respond and we do really go through all of those things. So yeah. you will be heard. I <laughs> promise. <laughs> like that. Yeah, we had some um, pretty good questions in here. Yeah, the. I'm seeing like yeah, there's a lot of work that goes cross platform. Yeah. Um, Someone's saying about the logical tree. This 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 oh gosh, this descend. Send me a tweet about your logical tree stuff that you want. I want to get some more details, or you can send me an email, mots at Microsoft, m o t z at Microsoft dot com. Let yep, me and I'm know. Maddie, M a d d y at Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think our biggest thing, like Jeff is talking about productivity gains. Sometimes just hiring people is in the solution, but I think that that's our number one focus is tooling and productivity gains. I think we're really, I'm pretty excited about what we're doing. We have a bunch of stuff that I can't talk about. So that's probably <laughs> the other thing is yep. we, can, we can only say things that are there. But um, what else are we doing? We're going to have like a device selection in, in this, right? Instead oh, of phone and yep. tablet. We're going to give you not just phone and tablet anymore. You're going to have real devices and resolutions to pick from to real, preview. Real control. <laughs> I like that. Ooh. All right, cool. Let's go back to some dual screen, actually, if you want to stop sharing. Oh, yeah. Let me uh, figure out how to close your face. I think it's this one. Yes. And let's we're see. back. And we're back. All right, cool. Let me put that there. There we go. Perfect. So let's see. Um, I oh, was also. Have a question. When uh, Xamarin Forms 4 is released, uh, tweet David. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if James knows that answer. I definitely don't, but well, he will know. I think with, with Xamarin Reforms, I don't think we're talking about necessarily like a release date on, right? We're in preview right now. So we're getting feedback. So what's in there and, and the next yep. stream. So next month we'll have, we'll make sure David, this is our first one. So we have so much content. We really want to try to grab in there and figure out the flow. So we want to make sure that we're, you know, hitting our times between an hour and 90 minutes maximum. And mm -hmm. um, uh, for Xamarin Reforms 4.0, that, uh, you know, there's a lot of previews that need to go into, and we'll keep doing previews and new versions of it here and there. Uh, and you know, we need to rev on stuff. So the collection or the collection views in there, the carousel views in there, um, visuals in there, a whole bunch of stuff, right? So something to think about just in, in general. There's a lot of a lot of stuff. One thing I want to show, man, I'm going to show you this. You can't see it, but I'm going to I'm going to show everyone. So I have. Where's my I have the stream up? Someone was talking about XAML styling. So a Aiden in here was talking about. XAML styling in here. And I found this really great extension for Visual Studio. I saw a tweet about it. It's called XAML Styler. I was going to talk about it. But it's extension. Ooh. And they just came out with 2017 or 2019 support, but I'm in 2017 here. And what's cool is that XAML Styler, you can go into your tools options. And you have all these settings down here for like what you want. So do you want spaces and how many spaces and tolerance and lines and new line exceptions and namespace things? And do you want like um, you know commas for thickness separator or, or padding or what are your different things that have Xamarin form stuff in here too, which is cool. So what I like though is like this is our default Xamarin essential stuff. Like things are on different lines, some things are on the same line. And I can just right click on it and say format XAML. And it puts it Ooh. into like beautiful little standard XAML, which I think is super cool. And for instance, even in, in alphabet, you can have it alphabetized. You can have to do a bunch of stuff. So here, for instance, if I decide that I want someone comes in and they add spaces for the margin instead of commas, I can say format code and it'll put it in for me automatically. Maddie can't see this, but it's pretty cool. I'm watching the stream. Don't um, worry. It's just 10 seconds behind. Yeah. So. <laughs> so it's pretty cool that you can do stuff like that. And it'll, you can have it alphabetized or you want things in certain order if you want some consistency. But I feel like your whole team has to do it, you know? 
But I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Anyways, that's my. Um, that's we my do have some date. questions, Mr. XJKZ. Cool. Uh, when you say the same thing as WPF border grid, do you mean in the property panel? Do you mean attributes on controls? Um, mm. You can tweet me or email me or James, Maddie with a Y and Mots with a Z at Microsoft.com if you want to follow up on that. Oh, um, maybe I guess you can add like row columns and yeah. and row definitions. Well, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Basically, um, anything that you can do, right, is there. And I think, it, it, like we were talking about the third party controls, didn't someone tweet about it working with the Telerik controls just, just worked? Yeah, it does. It just worked out of the box. And they were like, we don't know why this is working, but it is. <laughs> so very exciting. Um, yep. G, thanks. Next yep. Xamarin Mobile Community Stand Up is the first Thursday of the month. Very exciting. Um, what do we have on the YouTube? Anything over here? Um, let's we got see some here. .NET Core questions. Well, Xamarin uh, support .NET Core. Uh, well, Dennis was asking about that. Well, so the thing is, like, the, the runtime is the runtime, and our runtime is our runtime <laughs> in general. There's lots of optimizations <laughs> that go into every runtime for the mono runtime. But just because you would, your .NET Core targets specific platforms and you're creating a UI off of it, but know that, like, if you write code for a .NET Core application on Linux, like, if you put that into .NET Standard Library, you could just bring that into a Xamarin application. Yeah. Is, right? I mean, that should work. Sounds, sounds like it should work. Yeah, <laughs> if, if it's in a .NET Standard Library. Yeah, try it out. Let us know. That'd be a, that'd be a great blog for next month. Yeah, I, I wouldn't see why not. If you want to do a majority of your, like, back-end development on it, I wouldn't see why not. It's just C-sharp at the end of the day. You use VS Code to do your C-sharp back-end. Probably not your UI, right? Because there's no UI stuff there. That's tooling at that point. And the runtime is independent of running that code because we have a .NET Standard 2.0 compatibility, so all of your .NET Standard code that would run on .NET Core would run would run there in general. So, yeah. but yeah, if you're looking for something done that's like specific, you can always tweet at me like I'm looking for the specific thing and see where that makes sense. I think with other platforms, it's harder, right? Because the amount of work and some of the feedback even just to get iOS working on Windows is a lot of work to get that working. We get lucky on Mac because Android yep. and iOS are there, but then there's no you know, Windows. So it's like on Linux, there's only Android. Then it's a whole, whole, there's no Visual Studio besides VS Code, so, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, yep, so, yep, yep. so the .NET community stand-ups, they're going to be every single, ASP.NET is every Tuesday, different times. And on Thursday, we'll have mobile the first Thursday. Let me go to the YouTube here. Um, if you go to the .NET Foundation, I guess Twitch mm -hmm. is maybe better. Let me go to my pip here. So if you go over here, um, this is, you can just go to the events page, and you'll see all of them here. So the upcoming ones, the time, you can get reminders. I got one right on my phone that was like, hey, it's starting. You're starting because you hit the stream button. Cloud, yeah. we do languages and runtime. Um, if you tap on one of these, you know, this will cover framework, .NET Core, languages, CLI. Um, tooling is going to be Visual Studio, CLI, Roslyn, productivity. And then cloud will be like Azure, AI, AI ML containers, but all around um, .NET. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and definitely tweet at us or email us when you find more cool stuff to share. Um, there's no shortage of it, but we always like to keep our ear to the ground with the community. We don't want to just be finding this in isolation, so. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think I'm seeing if there's anything else. I know, I'm looking on the OneNote. I'm looking here like, if there's anything else before we. That was dense. That was we, a dense uh, almost 90 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thanks everyone for all the, the chats. This video will be on YouTube, on the .NET Foundation YouTube. So when you go over to .NET Foundation, you'll see them all here. So there's the one live stream, and then here's the upcoming ones. And see already the languages ones will be here. And then what's cool is that you can go and we'll put it in a playlist, and you can see all of them here. As soon as, it, as, soon as it's over, it'll be there. So you can watch back all the glory of all the awesome community stuff. Well, we want to thank you, the community, right? More than anything, you make this possible. We're just on here talking about all the awesome stuff that you do. Seriously, thank you all so much. We really appreciate it. All the all the work, all the feedback, and all the help that you all give each other. I mean, looking in the forums is just like awesome all the time. So it's great. Uh, and you make everyone else in DevDiv very jealous of the Xamarin team <laughs> and the mobile DevTools team. So. Yeah. Well, Maddie, thank, thank you so you. much for, for showing off some stuff and monitoring the chat and, and, and helping out. So next gotcha. month, all three of us hopefully will be here. We'll see. We got some more Xamarin monkeys hanging out. 
Of course, there's awesome stuff. Check out all the .NET community stand-ups. I'm on Twitter, at James Montemagno. Maddie? Yep. I'm Maddie Legere one L-E-G-E-R. There was some other um, Maddie in the world, huh? I know. Check your name. It was, it, was a tough, it was a tough choice. I was like, do I do something funny, or do I do my name with a number? One. You could, it's a good thing you didn't do two, because one, though. No. Right. Cool. Well, thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Uh, Maddie, have a great afternoon over there in you Bostonia. Too. Uh, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks. And thanks to G for setting this all up in yeah, the background. Thanks, Golnaz. Hi. <laughs> Bye. Bye.